Once it is accepted and believed that Christ is resurrected, it then should lead us to wonder why he was resurrected. Someone who is resurrected is someone who was dead. dead. If a person is dead and then resurrects, we have full confidence in what that resurrection implies. But we should then look back on what caused the death in the first place. What is the significance of what occurred? Everything keeps tying itself back, one thing to another with Christ. Everything is tied together and there are no loose ends. In Christ's death comes atonement for sin. Okay? If Christ came out of the grave and he, that means that he had no sin, then what did he die for? Okay? Thus, we can see that he died for us. That's absolutely right. We stand justified before, hello, we stand justified before God because of his death, of which the resurrection is the proof. As noted above, if Jesus died in a state of sin, then he was no Christ, but he is the Christ and his work is sufficient for the work of God promised in him, even from the foundation of the world. It all ties together. Everything is contingent on everything else. Death, burial, resurrection. Each one points to the other and it's inescapable what occurred. And if one didn't occur, then none of them occurred. But if they did occur, then there was a reason for each one in its, ordered, in its order, okay? From this understanding, we should then desire to know the fellowship of his sufferings. He died for us, and so we should also die to sin through him. This isn't simply the state of justification which we are granted by faith in him. This is the process of sanctification where we grow to become more like him. In this, we conform to his death, dying to sin because he died for sin. Okay.